At the time of recording this video, I have less than 10 pages left for my very first bullet journal. I'm going to share how I started and maintained a healthy, long-lasting relationship with my bullet journal as a complete noob. So maybe this is your first or your 17th time getting started. You've searched for simple or minimalist spreads for inspiration, only to come across beautiful artwork and intricate calendars, immaculate handwriting, and coded habit trackers. There's nothing wrong with these examples, but as a beginner, this is equivalent to viewing Olympian workout routines when you have no clue how to use gym equipment, and then being like, this is a good place to start. This is great to get you pumped to start, but can also be very misleading on what to expect and lead to disappointment when your journal is an Instagram photo worthy. Oh, fuck. As much as I love the YouTuber Matt Diavella, he kind of went overboard and I couldn't help but cringe when I watched his video where he tried out bullet journaling. Don't mess things up. What the f You stupid fucking dude. No. <laughs> It was no surprise to me that he didn't find it sustainable for the long run because he kind of did the most. The key is to start as simple as possible. Think about what your immediate needs are and then go from there. I needed somewhere to keep track of events and things I needed to get done. So I started with a calendar and a to-do list. That's it. Don't overcomplicate it. It was once so basic. Shortly after adding my calendar and my to-do list, I was like, oh, I should use this to take random life notes. Then I realized, well dang, if I have more than one thing scheduled in a day, I should probably make a calendar with more space for daily events, and I could probably just put my to-dos there too. The point is, instead of trying to predict how I was going to use the bullet journal by starting with a fancy calendar, specific list, trackers, and whatever else, I waited until I had a need then added some sort of system and optimized it so it worked better for me over time. It takes a lot of time to plan out spreads for things that I mentioned earlier, and it can be super discouraging when you end up not even using them. I remember it took me like an hour to count out all these dots to try to make even spaces and have a column per week. Well, this only worked for the shortened month of February, and I foolishly did the same thing for March, and then this ugly mess happened. And now everything's Rather than being unsatisfied and ripping out the pages to start over with a cleaner format, I dealt with it for a whole month and then revised it for the next month. So as I mentioned earlier, for the month of February, I stuck with a simple calendar on the left and my to-dos on the right. Then I started taking life notes in between, just kind of throwing things in there with no system. Then I added in this daily calendar, and that's when I was like, oh, I can see all the days on one section, but there's only 28 days, so that's why that worked. Come to March, I'm not sure why I put the calendar on the right side. I think I was just experimenting, but it was not a good one. Still tried to do the same thing, only to find out, oh, I can only fit 28 days again, and then had three extra days on the next space. Generally, I wasn't liking this setup with the notes, so then finally, after three months, I came up with this system where I kept the calendar on the left again, put some quadrants on the right with my thoughts and notes. Then from here, I finally figured out that if I split up the weeks into eight days, I could fit an entire month on one page and I'd have two extra days going to the next month, which was nice. And then I kind of kept up with this system for a while and then added things here and there. But for the most part, it took me three months to figure this out. So don't give up after a week or two of bullet journaling. All right, so this is taken directly from the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. Every weekday morning, within the first hour of getting up, I know at some point I'm going to sit down in front of my computer, whether it's on or off. So guess where I leave my bullet journal? Sitting wide open to my calendar, at my computer. By doing this every single day, at almost the same time and location, I made it clear and obvious to my brain that when I sit down at my desk in the morning before work, I will use my bullet journal. Yours could be, while my bougie trip pour coffee is doing its thing, I will open my bullet journal. Experiment and figure out what triggers or habits give you the most success to make it obvious for you to come back to journaling. 
Again, from Atomic Habits, make it easy. If I open my bullet journal and I don't write a single thing down, I count it as bullet journaling. For some people, if they don't vomit their thoughts for three pages straight, they might feel unaccomplished, not healthy. Along with managing your expectations, lower the bar for allowing the bullet journal to serve its purpose. I never force myself to write in my bullet journal for the sake of keeping a streak, but I do try to interact with it in any way. This could range from literally just opening it, to logging in a few events, to writing a page full of random thoughts. The point is, reps are more important than time. There's no need to perform a four hour ritual when you go to journal. Save that for later after you've already locked in consistency. What I love about my bullet journal is being able to look back at all the pages that have stickers on them. I use them to mark pages that have goals, random fun stuff, or to cover up things I wouldn't want people to know if for some reason my journal was read out loud at my funeral. Finding random stickers like this happy uterus can certainly lighten the mood and make my journal a more playful space. For example, here's a sticker of the POTUS pushing back student loans. Really, it doesn't have to be that serious. At the end of the day, your relationship with your bullet journal shouldn't be complicated. Be patient and remember that it's a tool that's supposed to serve you, not the other way around. I'm actually pretty sad that I'm finally coming to an end with this journal since I've been using it for almost exactly two years. Fortunately, I have enough room to finish on the month of December and then I'll have to move on to this upgraded bullet journal on steroids. If you're a beginner looking for a simple bullet journal setup, check out this video and subscribe to look out for when I set up my new journal for the new year.